Hey, Tony and Chris, back again. Hello. Starting to try to get back to our regular thing here. So happy that you're watching. Thank you for being here. We haven't done this in a while out of the gate, but let's just remind you, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do that. It's how we're making our money now, our living. So I got a family to feed. So does Tony. So yes. please subscribe, like, share, comment, engage, and tell your friends. Yeah, all those good things. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. It's, it's a time of year when if you're a parent, you know it's very tense and stressful and it's like, Ugh. Back to school. I'm happy to say I haven't had to deal with that in many, many years, so I'm quite relaxed. But Chris, how's back to school? Lily went eighth grade first day the other day, and I told her, I said, eighth grade was two of the best years of my life. <laughs> He's not joking. And um, anyhow, she had a great time, come back, met new friends, just very excited, and I'm, I'm excited for her. That's awesome. So. Now, she does like a thing where she's homeschool sometimes and then yeah, at school sometimes. a couple days a week she's at school, a few days here. So awesome. And now are, do you have any responsibilities I, in the home schooling at all? Getting her to and from. Let me just school. tell you that there's nothing about this, that the amount of YouTube videos that, and maybe I need to find the list of teachers and posts that we find, mm. but like Rachel found two teachers. She really liked their lessons on YouTube. So when stuff would come in the lesson plan that we're like, this is new, we don't know what this is. We'd go to that and watch it and be like, oh, okay. And the teachers, they'll talk to you, the parent, like, this is how you teach your child this. God, so what a time to be alive. Yeah. I think back to the dark ages of the nineties. Yeah. Where they're just like, I just go steal the teacher's edition and yeah, I mean, yes, put the answers like, down. Like our, yeah. When we, when we did it, that, that's <laughs> our old school. And then yeah, like the internet was just starting to come around when my kids were starting like elementary school, but that kind of stuff didn't exist yet. I mean, yeah. they weren't thinking like that. So you, you were kind of on your own and when it got to the part where especially Lexi would get to have questions about things. If it was math, I was, I couldn't. Oh, oh, and math now, I mean, I have no idea what they're talking about. They, and I'm like, they started changing that so long ago. And I, I, I don't know that I've ever met a parent who wasn't like, why are they doing it like this? Yeah. yeah. So, well, I'm glad it went well. I'm glad she's having a good time. I'm excited for her. Fantastic. Hope that if you have kids back to school or you're maybe a kid who went back to school, hope it's a great year for you. Congratulations and good luck. Again, I'm so happy I don't have to do that anymore. How's Betty? Betty, uh, so our pit bull Betty, you know, she's been battling cancer uh, for a while now, and we just got moved to Nashville. She has a new oncologist, love the office, love the doctor, everything is great. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, she's not, she's, it's, it's progressing. And so she's already been through three different oral chemos, and there are still two more she can do in the company that we use. But I went in the other day and they gave her an MRI and an x-ray and you can see some new stuff, which is mm. not what we want to see, but you know, we, kn we know it's coming. So we're doing our, our last, probably the last thing we feel can be done. And that's with a doctor too, to try to slow this down and give her a little more time, which is intravenous chemotherapy, which she has not done yet. More aggressive and it's three treatments, obviously very expensive and which is awesome when you're not really working per se. <laughs> We are working. It's yeah. just this, this takes time to build up. All the more reason to like and engage and share. Yes, please. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to prepare myself for the inevitable, and I'm just hoping that this, other, this IV chemo will slow it down, maybe shrink some things that have grown, and give her you know, some, some more quality of life. And I'd love to, I'd love to get another year out of this. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But if you can send out some good vibes, well, I know she would appreciate it, and so would we. So thank you very much for that. Thanks for bringing that up. The rest of the show, I'm going to be like, oh, my yeah. sweet Betty. Ah, so you know, we talked about moving back to Nashville, and we're, and we're thrilled to be back here. When we left Nashville in like 2017, my big beef with Nashville drivers was just like nobody realized you could turn right on red. Yeah. But that doesn't, that's not the new issue. And, and, and this is true of wherever you live in the world. I think if you move to a new region of wherever you are, you will find some new thing about the drivers yes. that probably drives you crazy. So when we lived in East Tennessee, nobody knew how to merge. For no reason at all, things would get slowed down and you'd be sitting there going, why is this happening? There's no wreck. They just, people don't understand how to merge. What I have discovered, two things since moving back to Nashville. One is the instantaneous lane change. That's a big move now. Yes. Like, don't matter. I'm coming over. It's your problem to deal with it. And, and I mean, and it's not like get in the lane like this. It's like they're going along and all of a sudden, boom, it's like they're sideways going into a lane. And I'm like, what are you doing? So no wonder there are so many wrecks. That's a big one. And then... The blatant red light running. And I don't mean like sneaking through when the light's kind of yellow turning red. I mean, you're sitting at a red light for a while and then people just decide, this has gone on long enough. I'm not doing this anymore. And they just go. What is happening? I watched three people and it's always how this goes to the first person does it. And then like at least a couple people behind will go, well, they're doing it. I'm doing it too. Yeah. I, it just blew my mind that, that, that that's a thing here. If you come to Nashville and you're driving a car, please be careful. I'm usually all about when the light turns green, go. 
But even I have now started pausing a little bit because I've watched so many yeah. people run red lights. Well, I saw somebody the other day at a, at a red light where the line was backed up. It took me 45 minutes to go six miles, by the way. Mm. And as I'm waiting, I see a car behind me. It's two lanes. And then you got the little turn lane down at the end, you know. But we're waiting. And, and I'm thinking, okay, this is going to take me about three light changes to get up there. And car behind me pulls out and drives down the wrong way all the way down to where there's two cars coming. And they end up pulling off into the grass so this guy can get through and then he goes up to the turn lane to turn left it's like everybody else is gonna have to figure this out i'm i'm going those kind of people drive me crazy i will say have i done moved i've never gone against traffic but yeah. have i gone into the breakdown lane before yeah i've done that but only when i'm trying to get to a place where it's just blocked off because the yeah. traffic is so thick and I have, i'm also all about like the plus side of i guess of, of trucks on the highway is you know you're gonna have a place to get in front of somebody especially mm -hmm. if it's stop and go because they're always going to have more space so I'm more liable to to cruise along for a little while, but I'm not one of those people that drive me crazy where you see a sign that says lane ends, you know, in half a mile and they go to the last possible second. But that's what they tell you to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, the zipper merge. Yes. Yeah. But when but when you know a lane is going to close, you're really not supposed to wait until the last second to get over yeah. because you're just going to jam up where the lane mm -hmm. is becoming one lane. And then you get the people who are trying to prove a point. Well, you're not getting in front of me. Oh, yeah. That's what always cracks me up. I had somebody a couple of days ago where it was, it was we were doing the every other person thing and it was my turn to go and that person was not going to, they're speeding up, not going to let me. And so I sat directly behind this person for three miles <laughs> and then we ended up, you know, getting in a, a faster zone and then they ended up behind me and I mean, on my tail, on a two lane for like two and a half miles. And I'm like, there's nowhere I can go. There's a car directly in front of me. And they're, what do you expect me to do? Patience. I don't have it, but I try to tell every, yeah. other people to have it. Let's talk about scams for a second. We're going to protect you here. Clam fire is a big one right now, but there's a lot of scams out there. Clam fire is where, like, for instance, we're in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I kept having this stuff pop up in my feed advertisements for an Amazon product, Clam Fire. They had Baby Taylor guitars, clearance sale, one day only, $39. What a deal. That's like a $400 guitar. And it's like, 39 that's too good to be true. And I start looking at the reviews. Unbelievable. Got the guitar quick. It, this is great. And then one of them was like, the strings were a little loose, but once we tightened them, it was fantastic. Loved this. It's a fraudulent site in China, and they do this with Rolling Stone albums. Get the entire Rolling Stone collection for $40 on vinyl. And what they do is they either don't send you anything, <laughs> or they send you like a $3 product. And when you get it, they now have a record that they sent you a product at the post office. Because I went to the post office and said, hey, I need my Rolling Stone album. there, And I got this little watch. And they're like, oh, well, it says here that you received the package you ordered. Wow. And when you try to get in touch with the organization, they're not there or they don't have contact information. So the suggestion is on anything that looks too good to be true, it probably is. And even the reviews, read the middle of the road reviews. Yeah. Not the, the best or the worst, but also if, they're, if the site doesn't have contact information, if it seems, you know, you just have to really look at it. Don't just go, oh my goodness, I saw three great reviews and they're giving away, you know, a car for 80 bucks. <laughs> It just ain't going to happen. Yeah, it, and it happens more and more, you know, and, and you see these things, and sometimes they're so good at it, mm -hmm. you say, wow, I can see how somebody would be fooled. Well, I, I mean, I, I, it got me and a friend of mine on the Rolling Stones thing, because yeah. we're like, man, I looked at it, it looks legit, this could be okay, and then I got a $3, like, step watch wow. in the mail, and then when I went to the post office and said, I didn't get my Rolling Stones, they were like, it says here you did receive something from them. Unbelievable. And, so. th and then you see the ones like where you get the text. It's like, your subscription is about to be, and they mm -hmm. don't even tell you what the subscription is. And you know, just click this link. And I'm like, how do people fall for that? Because well, that one is so lazy. And like, I don't know what to do. We keep getting billed for People Magazine and we didn't subscribe to it. And they keep sending it to the house. And we're like, why are they billing us for something we didn't order? So if these people who, who take the time to set up these scams would just focus that energy on like a, a legitimate job, their They'd, life would probably be way, much, way better. Be killers. And they could probably make a lot of yeah. money. So, all right. So the clamfire.com. Yes. That's just one of them. One of many, but make sure you do the research. It's like with anything, anything you see on the internet, you probably ought to double check it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just be careful. Uh, so it's two sh different limited series about the same subject. I'll give you the quick synopsis of Netflix and Painkiller with Matthew Roderick. It's very fascinating to watch. I won't say it's great because I was very sad after watching it and seeing what happened, but it's interesting. And I, I know some people that have been addicted to opioids. It's just, it's a sad show. That's all I can say. It's inter not entertaining, but fascinating to watch. Okay. So, and then you may have seen a show, I think it's been a couple of years ago now on Hulu called Dope Sick. 
So it's the same story about this company that really started the opioid crisis. Mm, and Oxycontin. How, yeah, Oxycontin and everything, and how they got doctors to prescribe it and the links they went to. It is crazy to watch. I have not seen Painkiller. I have seen Dope Sick, and I highly recommend Dope Sick. I really think I want to see you yeah. or hear your review after watching that as well. I'm going to watch it because I, I during my time in Nashville before, I remember the building I lived in was full of these 20-something-year-old beautiful women that I'm like, how are these girls affording these sports cars and the rent here? And they and they were pharmaceutical reps, which they address in Painkiller. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so if you haven't seen either of those, I mean, again, I can't attest to Painkiller, but yeah. uh, watch them. I. Having seen Dope Sick, it sounds to me, and just I watched the trailer for Painkiller, I feel like Dope Sick is a little more accurate view of, of what happened okay. because the way that Matthew Broderick plays that character apparently is not really like he was. Yeah, it's weird. It's like he was hallucinating 90% of his show. Uh, interesting. So, yeah, watch them and let us know what you thought. If you've seen them before, I'd uh, love to see your reviews in the comments. That'd be awesome. And then on the uh, in, in the entertainment thing, this is the story that is really all over the place. I admittedly don't know as much about this as I should because I've just kind of been disconnected from some of this music stuff because I've been working on other things. But this Oliver Anthony guy. I'm a conspiracy guy from the standpoint of I believe there's more to this than people are letting on. I just don't believe you explode out of nowhere unless there was something at work here. Like he has a manager. Now that comes out before the first couple of articles I read was like, this is just a guy that films videos on his farm and records songs on his phone. And he's just a regular guy. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, his manager said this and I'm like, <laughs> so he's got a manager. So now it's, you know, I just, I believe this was not a plant, but I believe there's more to it than just happened. Yeah. I, it's just, there are so many things like this and there's so many you know artists who, explode on TikTok or on YouTube or whatever. And then you say, oh my gosh, they, they did it all themselves. And, and then you find out later, well, it wasn't exactly it's, like It's that. like Billy Ray Cyrus with Achy Breaky Heart. Everybody said, like, it just happened. And it was like, no, they sent a video out to all the clubs in the country before they released it, getting people to do the line dance. And then they released the song, you know, and it was like, oh, people already know the line dance. And it was, I mean, there's plans for all those things. So, you know, the, the crazy thing, and I've only read about this, honestly, I haven't even taken the time to listen to the song because yeah. honestly, I just don't care. But the, the way people are talking about it, I guess there, there's a few lines in the song that, that, you know, they got people really fired up, basically saying, you know, obese people were milk and welfare. And he said some things that were pretty harsh. Yeah. The crazy thing, and I'm not trying to get political in any way, but it was funny to me the, when those things were happening and the things, he, other things he said in the song, the far right immediately took it on as their anthem. You know, this guy's finally saying the truth or whatever. Then in an interview recently, Oliver Anthony came back and said, I think what this country is should be celebrated for is our diversity. We have so much diversity here. We need to celebrate that. He started saying those kind of things. And now suddenly they're coming back and saying, oh, <laughs> so it's like. It just let the guy make some music and, and, and if you like it, enjoy it. And if you don't, don't. Yeah, That's the beautiful thing about art. You, you take in and enjoy what you like, and then you don't listen to or watch what you don't like. I would caution him if I was in his inner circle, the Kenny Rogers advice and everybody that follows us and watches our shows and shorts knows our love and affection for Kenny Rogers. And he always had such great advice. He always said the slower the ride to the top, the longer the ride at the top before you start going down, the quicker you shoot up, the quicker you shoot down. And I mean, he came out of nowhere He's everywhere. The key will be, where's he going to be a year from now? Or even six months. Yeah. Think about the, who's the last person that you remember that just exploded out of nowhere, out of nowhere, that's still riding high. There's a few. Yeah. But now remember too, just because it's out of nowhere for you doesn't mean they didn't yeah. have tons of success. Exactly. Already. That's like Luke Combs. Everybody was like, oh, he just came out of nowhere. And it's like, no, that guy was grinding well, for Kane 10 Brown, years. Yeah. And Brown's another great example, but they had built this following online and everything. So that's not really the case. This guy, I mean, really, I know he had the TikTok and stuff, but I don't know. I, I wish him well. And, and, you know, again, I haven't, I haven't heard the song. I haven't really cared enough to, to dive into this, but I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've heard the song, if you've been on either side of this, drop it in the comments. Yeah. You know, what, what are your thoughts? You think this guy's going to be in for the long haul? Is he going to be a superstar or is he just a flash in the pan? Uh, we got one more story. This is a story that is bonkers. I don't know if you remember it. It's a missing person story. This woman in Oakland, California, about, I don't know, I think like eight years ago, got reported as a missing person. Mm -hmm. And just in the last, I don't know if it's been the last week or two, she came forward, called the police basically and said, Hey, um, I just found out that I'm been, I've been listed as missing. I'm not, I'm fine. Everything's great. 
Crazy story. So it was 2015, and her name's Lisa Hu, and she was reported missing. But now the Oakland Police Department says she reached out, claimed she was never missing, unaware of any report that she had been filed as missing. The cops said someone reported her missing, but she wasn't actually missing at all. If someone's reported missing, we're obligated by law to follow up and try to locate them. I guess she was 31, and she was first reported missing back in December of 2015. The police haven't disclosed who filed the initial report, and I think that's super important. Like, who took the time to do this? Why did they do this? Well, if she wasn't missing, my question is, how could they not find her? That's the thing. She was last seen in a neighborhood in Oakland. Family claimed at the time of her disappearance she was in good physical and mental condition. And then a rep for the police department says, you know, her report was considered an ongoing missing case. And they pushed it out because they wanted to get more leads. She came forward, notified the department she's not missing. And so they've removed her from the missing persons list, and she's identified, she's confirmed as safe. They didn't share where she's been for the past eight years. I think another hugely important thing, like you said, why not sooner? What's, how did they not find her? She must have had an address. Yeah. I mean, they didn't go knock on the door and go, hey, we're, you know, you got reported missing. Yeah. They confirmed she wasn't harmed. She wasn't held captive. So where's this woman been? Well, it's obvious. A UFO has abducted her. She is probably not the same person. She's an imposter, like invasion of the body snatchers thing going on here. And there's about to be an invasion. So now you've been warned. <laughs> You're joking, but... Somebody out there is, is either believing this or has already started this conspiracy theory. Oh, we'll be used as a quote. Like, this is confirmed on the internet. <laughs> yeah, these two idiots on YouTube. <laughs> Crazy story, though. I, I just, I've never heard, I don't think anything quite like that. Eight years, they say she's missing, and then she just walks in, in, in our door and goes, oh, by the way, I heard I was missing. I'm not. Where have you been? Exactly. More details are needed. We need to find out more about the story. Exactly. Curiosity is definitely high there. As we close today, I want to remind you uh, about some you know, some new ventures. You know, we, with the Tony and Chris store and Etsy is there. Honestly, we, we haven't done a lot to, to refresh that. Yeah. Oh, and it's But it's still there. If you're looking for some Tony and Chris gear, it, it's there. But we have got a few things going on. And we want to make something very clear. This digital stuff and then is definitely a major part of what we're trying to do for a living. As we're growing. Yeah. And we're still growing. We're, we're, we're getting to That's, that 3,000 mark is very close for subscriptions. Thank you. And I'll, and I'll just be honest. I mean, we talk about it all the time. I was talking with some heavy hitters in the radio industry the other day, and radio is the new newspaper. It's, I mean, one of the trade magazines basically just went out of business. So digital is the way to go. So we're trying to build that. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. Be looking very soon. We, we are working with Amazon now as associates. And then separately, I've got an influencer thing going on. I know you're going to get a thing mm -hmm. going on. So we're going to have other ways for you to, to help support the show while just basically buying things you would already be buying anyway. And we'll just get a little piece of that. Yes. And then, of course, you know, the options are here. And thank you, like Noel and, and Steven, people who kind of regularly shoot money our way. Gifts and thanks and all those kind of things on our shorts and on these longer shows. You can do that. That all helps us you know, move forward with this business. And if you're like, I'm not going to buy anything from your links. I'm not going to give you any money. Like and engage with us. Y you've watched part of the video. The least you can do is slap a like on it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, subscribe. You don't have to get notifications if you don't want to. Subscribe and go away. We'd appreciate it if you come back and watch what we're doing. Yeah, and share it with your friends. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and then also, and you can you know, keep an eye out on our social media and stuff outside of what we're doing like this. We're also working some things. If you have or know someone in any kind of business uh, on the outside, I'm, I'm looking at voiceover work, audio books, things like that, uh, because it's something I love to do. And you're great at it, to be honest. I mean, well, thank you. Well, I mean, you, you know, I ain't got good grammar. <laughs> <laughs> but Tony, he's really good at that stuff. He's good at writing scripts, too. Your timing on that stuff has always been amazing, yeah, so how you get it. Anything like that uh, available, reach out to us. Uh, you can do that on our personal pages or on the Tony and Chris page or right here. And then, Chris, I know you've been working. Uh, I work with Pump House Records, so I ask everyone to follow them and check them out. And I'm also working with two artists, Styles Hari, and please follow him and, and get his merch. And the same with Rebecca Lynn Howard. Check them out. So a lot of things happening. You know, we're just uh, former radio guys basically looking to, to find our place in all this. And we know that mm -hmm. there is a place for us. So we appreciate you watching. We appreciate anything you do to get us out there in front of people. It means the world to us. Thank you. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time.